Hello everyone and welcome to an incredible game from round 2 of the FIDE Grand Prix semi-finals currently being played in Belgrade. It's Maxim Vashielograd versus Richard Rapport. If you've been following what's been happening in the semi-finals, uh, the first game was won by Rapport. It was an incredible game uh, where Rapport uh, pretty much just crushed MVL with the white pieces. It was a very tricky game and, well, that Grunfeld uh, that, that we've discussed. If you haven't seen it, do check it out. Uh, you will appreciate this one uh, a lot more because as he won the first game, Rapport Rapport only needs to draw this game uh, to go into the finals and that means that you can choose maybe not to go into some sort of a crazy opening and uh, you know just uh, let everything fly uh, across the board uh, but that's kind of exactly what Rapport does here so it's an incredibly uh, difficult game to follow it's a very long game so you guys better have uh, yeah, enough time to check it out so uh, just to make it a little more interesting I will give you a super fun fact uh, that was posted on Twitter uh, by Olympio Urkan a chess historian as we've uh, had a Tartakover game a few videos ago that um, a super end game that Capablanca played against Tartakover uh, he said that due to incredible research done by Michael Lawrence we now know that uh, Tartakover had green eyes and this uh, up until this point this was an unknown fact so if you guys are you know going out today or you will have a meet up with your friends or family you can impress them with your vast knowledge about Tartakovet having green eyes it's a fairly new information so I'm sure they will appreciate it greatly now getting back to the game Envil has the white pieces and he needs a win to force tie breaks otherwise he's out of the uh, competition so here we have e4 uh, and uh, e5 by rapport knight to f3 knight to c6 and bishop to b5 so the Rui Lopez is on the board and of course if you need a draw you all know what we play we go for the Berlin defense but here we have a6 going for Morphe's defense bishop to a4 and now uh, knight to f6 being the most popular here rapport plays d6 and this is already leading uh, into something very very special that he prepared Maxim castles we have bishop to g4 and of course h3 we challenge the bishop and now the bishop has to move or does does the bishop has to have to move uh, that's the question a rapport plays h5 and already this is only move six and already a rapport is offering a piece this isn't really a piece offering because the bishop cannot be captured here uh, if the bishop is captured then whatever you do with the knight if you move it queen comes to h4 and then you just get checkmated so uh, you're not really doing doing anything uh, good here so we have d4 this is the standard way of dealing with the h5 idea and now uh, also uh well not the standard way the standard way is actually to first eliminate the knight and then after b captures uh then play d4 and then okay we say okay now we're threatening d captures on e5 we're we're super fine with trading queens then comes queen f6 and the game is uh well very very interesting but here uh, Maxime goes for the immediate the d4 and now Rapport says all right since you didn't capture here I will play b5 bishop to b3 and only now knight captures on d4 so now you can see that there's a lot more pressure the knight survived uh, uh if uh, black is allowed to capture on f3 that's going to be great for black so of course now we play h captures on g4 uh, but now it's a little bit different uh, because after h captures on g4 you are controlling the g5 square as you've pushed the pawn to d4 so knight to g5 now you're already pressuring black uh, threatening to capture on f7 so knight to h6 and now uh, how do you continue uh, one way is to play bishop to d5 put pressure uh, on the rook and then you don't even care about c6 you can play c3 uh, push away the knight from d4 that will be good good for you another way is to just play f4 but this looks super aggressive and uh, as black prepared to this it might be uh, a little a little dangerous for example if g captures on f3 you can just play knight captures on f3 and everything is perfectly fine but still you constantly have to keep an eye on this uh, h4 square so instead after this knight h6 we have g3 by maxime and now we have bishop to e7 just nicely continuing development uh, we have f4 now so not running away from any uh, complications in fact Maxime uh, invites complications because now uh, if you go for g captures on f3 uh, we're gonna play knight captures on f3 and now let's say queen d7 you want to go uh, with the queen to h3 there's king g2 and now well, uh, black and castle queen side and it's a complete mess of a position so this is something that Maxime would definitely uh, like to avoid uh, but uh, uh, it's uh, you know it's something that has to be played so here a rapport that doesn't go for this he plays queen to d7 in instead and now we have f5 
uh, Maxim closes this and now uh, there is no more attack on the king's side, at least for the moment. So here c6, now you, you can uh, maybe have some ideas of advancing d5 in the future, and now knight to c3. Maxim continues development, we have queen to d8, now putting pressure on the knight here, and here knight captures on f7. Uh, so what's the idea behind this move? Well, knight captures on f7 and queen captures on g4, going after the g7 pawn, and it seems that Maxime is on the attack, he wants a win here, but Rapport says, all right, let's just eliminate the bishop here, we have a captures on b3, and now we have bishop to g5. Um, uh, sorry, bishop to g5 by black. Now, uh, attacking the bishop on c1, we have king to g2, and now queen to f6. So, it's not all that pleasant for the white king on g2, but everything seems to be working out nicely. Uh, here, we have knight to d1, preparing to bring the knight over to, to f2, maybe h3, then put a lot of pressure on this bishop, and basically force the trade. So, uh, Rapport trades it right away. Uh, bishop captures on c1, rook captures on c1, and now queen to g5, offering a queen trade. He says, all right, uh, the, uh, the, the, the gambit paid off, uh, you didn't really go for the most aggressive way of playing it, but now I trade queens and, uh, well, we call it a, a day. So here, knight to f2, uh, you have to trade because your rook is hanging on c1 as well. So knight to f2, queen captures on g4, knight captures, and now knight to g5, going after the d4 pawn. Uh, the e4 pawn and now knight back to f2 defending the pawn and now it's only move 23 the situation on the clock is already maxim 27 minutes a rapport 25 minutes and we still need to make uh, 17 more moves to reach time control so here a uh, rapport has a variety of moves to choose from he can play king e7 king to d7 just keep the king in the center of the board which is something that uh, you can usually do you can uh, start advancing with a5 but he actually castles queen side with ideas of um, uh, busting through the the center with the d5 and now uh, he gives the white uh, well sort of a lot to play for because now uh, there's the open h file to go for there's the the uh, a6 pawn that's a little bit weak uh, d6 pawn is still a backwards pawn so here you uh, kind of give white uh, some chances and here maxim plays c4 first he wants to keep the d6 pawn on d6 and keep it a, a weakness we have king to c7 now comes rook to h1 makes sense it's the only open file on the board so we need to place a rook on it uh, and now b captures uh, on c4 again you could try improving the position a little bit further with king to b6 but the rapport says this is fine b captures on c4 and now a5 grabbing more space on the queen side rook to a1 now we have pressure on the queen side and on the king side and now king to b6 defending this pawn we have rook h to d1 now still with full control over the d5 square not allowing black this d5 idea which is kind of the whole reason why a rapport played castle's queen side he wanted to push uh, d5 so here uh, we have rook to h7 uh, and now comes a uh, rook to d3 and this is a beautiful rook lift by uh uh, by Maxime, uh, there's the very aggressive c5 check, as you see, uh, if the uh, if the pawn is captured, the rook here is hanging, the problem is, after king captures on c5, you can play rook captures on a5, and after king to b6, there's even rook captures on e5, so it seems like it's, uh, you know, kind of winning, uh, but then you run into rook d to h8. And how are you how are you playing this? Well, we're gonna play rook captures on d6. Now comes rook to h2 check, king f1, and now you even allow knight to f7, forking your rooks, and once the rook moves, let's say rook e to e6, knight captures on d6, rook captures, and you have this position where white is up two pawns. And if anyone is better here, it's definitely white, as the two rooks really uh, are well. Uh, hard to coordinate here with the knight nicely covering the h1 square so this would be playable for white uh, however maxim needs a win and he can't just rush into something like this so instead rook to d3 this move is more precise we have rook d to h8 now going for that uh, attack on the king side and now rook to b3 with check so we're winning the a5 pawn regardless of what black plays we have king to a6 now rook b to a3 going after the a5 pawn rook to h2 with check king to f1 and and now king to b6. Uh, we have rook captures on a5, and now comes knight to f3, and we have this incredible position where uh, Maxime is winning, but only if he finds the correct continuation, and uh, I had a... Um, 
Uh, I had a lot of discussion with myself which position to use in this game as the pause the video moment because uh, I had like 20 to choose from and I decided to use this one uh, because it's so early on in the game and it's the one that really uh, makes all the difference. So feel free to pause the video here and try to find the absolute best way for white to exploit the advantage while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this uh, brilliancy. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is, of course, pawn to c5 with check. And now that you see it, of course, as usual, you believe it, uh, as this will open up the d file to be used uh, for our rooks. So here, d captures on c5. If you don't capture this, you're just getting checkmated. It doesn't matter what you do. Let's say you go qu a king to b7. Now all of the squares are taken away from you. Rook a7 check. King b8, you're going to go here. King goes back. And now just rook to a7 will be checkmated. The b6 square uh, is taken. So the pawn absolutely has to be captured. We have d captures on c5. And now rook to a6 with check. We have king to b5. Uh, interestingly, if uh, you go king to c7 or king to b7, uh, it's uh, playable, but still very, very ugly. King to b7 is definitely out of the question because after rook to a7 check, king to b6, rook 1 to a6 check, king b5, there's this very nasty rook a3. And now this is hanging, this is hanging, uh, but not just that uh, all, all of this is hanging. Even if you play something like knight to d4, then you run into <laughs> rook b7 check. And where is the king going? Go. The only square is c4, and now rook to c3 is checkmate. Uh, as the d5 square is taken by the white pawn. So there are many, many things you want to do here. This, however, is not one of them. Another way you could play this is to go king to c7. So this is a little bit better as you have the d6 square. But now we play rook a7 check, king d6, and we capture the g7 pawn. And now we have the f and the g pass pawns that will start marching forward. And there is not all that much... Uh, uh, black can do here. Uh, for example, if, if rook h1 check, this is something that you can play, but after knight captures and rook captures, king to g2 attacks the rook and the knight. Rook captures, we have king captures on f3, uh, but still, it's uh, only white who can win this. The past g and f pawn are simply too strong. So after rook to a6, we don't have king b7 or king c7, there's king to b5, and this is a little bit uh, different and even more difficult to calculate. Uh, and uh, Maxim, of course, knows the uh, the way to do this, he first plays rook 1 to a5 with check, king to b4. Uh, if you go king to c4, this is also possible. Then we again go for rook to a3, attack the knight, and if knight to d4, then we play rook to a7. And again, there's this very nasty... Uh, position where black has to be very very careful not to get checkmated however here you are up a tempo so you can waste the move defending this pawn but still knight to g4 will attack the rook and after something like rook h1 king f2 and now king to b4 so you don't uh, get checkmated there's still rook b7 check and after knight to b5 there's knight captures on e5 so incredibly complicated position but the black is completely tied down so instead after this uh, uh we don't have king to c4 king to b4 is played and now uh rook to a4 with check of course maxim knows that rook to a3 is the square for the rook that has to be played because then you have all of those tactics with rook a3 rook to c3 uh, but this is move 36 and he needs a few more moves to reach time control so he's gonna give a few unnecessary checks uh just to reach time control king to b5 rook 6 to a5 with check king b6 rook a6 check king b5 rook 4 to a5 with check king b4 and only now rook to a3 so now this is move 41 time control has been reached and now you have additional time to uh, at, uh, you know, try and win the game and not drop out of the uh, semifinals. So what can a rapper do to defend here? His knight on f3 is hanging. Let's say he goes knight to d4 uh, because knight to d2 was played, but knight to d4 is also playable, incredibly complicated, so we will show it. Uh, here, knight 6 to a4 will be played, and after king b5, again, rook to a7. And now going after the g7 pawn. And again, if the pawn is defended, there's this rook b7 check. You have to go to c4 and rook to c3 checkmate. Uh, so it's very, very, very hard to play. You don't have to uh, defend this pawn, but still it's uh, incredibly, incredibly ugly. You have to give it up. That's the whole point. Uh, black can play something like c4 uh, just to make some room for the king on c5. But it's going to be after king ca rook captures on g7, it will be incredibly difficult to defend this. So instead of knight to d4, 
uh, like we said, after this um, uh, rook to a3 move, we have knight to d2. This comes with check. And now Maxime has to make a choice. One move uh, wins the game. The other move uh, does not win the game. But uh, still, you have to calculate a lot. And it's really impressive that Maxime played this uh, incredibly quickly. Uh, so here you have to play king to g1. This is what Maxime played. Uh, but just to give you an idea of uh, how difficult it is, uh, after king to e1, uh, black plays c4. And now after rook to a7, which is kind of your uh, whole point, you, you play knight to b3. After rook captures and g7, now you play rook to g2. This is the star move that black has to defend the position. And now everything is, uh, well, just incredibly difficult to, to defend. Uh, if rook to b7 check, we're going to play king to c5. And now... Uh, what do you play here? Uh, you have to force a draw. That's the reality of the position because if you try something like f6, then uh, we just win the game. Rook g1 check, king e2, knight to d4 check, king to d2, and now rook to h2. Going after the knight here, and if you try defending it, uh, king to e3, we just play rook to e1 check, force the king away from the defense of the knight. If you go here, attack the rook, we first deliver rook to e2 check, now the knight falls, and of course black wins the game. So that's uh, in case uh, you try something like f6 uh, to try and win the game. So what you would actually have to do here in order to not lose the game is just uh, giving up the rook here for the knight. Uh, and then after pawn captures, you're going to play rook captures on b3. And now after rook h to h2, you're going to play rook to f3. Defend your knight. And this is now a draw. White is up two pawns, but also down the exchange. Uh, something like rook g1 check, king e2. Rook to b1 can be played, but still it will... Uh, it, it will not be enough for, for anything serious, J even king to e3. Now, if you capture the pawn, uh, for example, then even knight to, knight to d3 check uh, wins for white. So black has to be very, very careful. He'll, of, of course, the um, uh, capturing of the pawn is not mandatory. You can continue checking rook e1 check, and that's perfectly fine. So uh, king to e1 uh, is the way not to win the game. So, of course, Maxim plays king to g1, and now he's still winning. So now, uh, how can Rapport try and defend this? He tries knight to c4. If he can eliminate the b2 pawn, maybe then he can start pushing his past c pawn as his g7 pawn is still on the board, so white uh, still can't push uh, all that rapidly. But Maxim, again, plays with the absolute precision. He plays rook to d3. And now the the idea is uh, let's say let's say black captures on b2, uh, rook to b6 check, and now after king to c4 you are trying to give up uh, this um, uh, this knight. But the problem is uh, we don't uh, capture the knight. Uh, if you capture here on b2, then rook captures on f2 removes the defender of the d3 rook, so you've messed up your position. What you would have to do is rook to a3, and now you've trapped the knight. There is no square here for the knight, and there's really not much. Uh, uh, you can do here. You're going to have to play something like rook captures on f2, and after king captures, now just to save the knight, knight d1 check, but again, king g2, knight to c3, and it's uh, 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 now a, a terrible position for black. White will uh, be able to win this easily. Uh, so instead, after rook to d3, uh, we have rook 2 to h6. Uh, this is how uh, Rapport will try and hold this. He keeps an eye on his c6 pawn, and now we have rook to a7. Uh, this is one winning move. Uh, the other one is b3, but b3 is so complicated that we are not going to go into that one. Uh, so rook to a7, this is also winning and perfectly fine for Maxime. Rook to b8 now. Uh, getting the rook to that uh, b file as we always have to watch out for this rook to b7 check and now uh, now b3 uh, this is uh, playable but it uh, it's not as deadly as it was uh, when, when I first mentioned it because now we have knight to a5 and Rapport's position is now uh, incredibly difficult to breach unless you play one move and Maxim finds the move which is uh, which is just incredible uh, and that is knight to g4. Uh, he attacks the rook here, and now how do you defend this? Well, uh, knight captures on b3. Rapport picks up the b3 pawn, creates a passed c pawn, and now he gives up the uh, dh6 rook. However, uh, Maxim plays uh, rook captures on g7, and this is where Maxim uh, goes wrong. You ha you absolutely have to capture the, the rook here. Point is that it looks dangerous because the c pawn will uh, start marching forward, but uh, you can stop at c4. You're going to play rook d6, and after g captures on h6, you're going to play rook captures on c6. And now once something like knight to d4 is played, uh, 
uh, it doesn't matter because let's say rook captures on h6, c3, you are uh, just in time to stop the pawn. If king to b3, king to g2, now allowing the rook to defend the c1 square um, uh, this way. And now if c2, we just play rook h1. Now both of the rooks are defending the, the c1 square. Now you start marching your pawns forward and that's the way to, to, to win this position. Uh, but... Um, uh, time was not in abundance. Uh, Maxime played rook captures on g7, which again looks incredibly winning for white, uh, but the problem is uh, it might not be. So here, c4, uh, and now rook to d1. Uh, again, if you try knight captures on h6 here, c captures on d3, the pass pawn is now uh, already on d3 and it's not going to be possible to stop it. So after c4, we have rook to d1 and now rook h to h8. Uh, now, how do you defend this? Of course, uh, uh, here Rapport wants to keep an eye on his pawns. Uh, knight captures on e5, uh, going after the c6 pawn. Knight captures on c6 would fork the rook and the king. So rook h to c8, defending this, and now rook to g6, going after the c6 pawn once again. And uh, Rapport just plays c5. So here, uh, believe it or not, uh, the, both players are playing with, with surgical precision, uh, you know, aside from that uh, slip where Maxime did not capture the uh, on, on h6 and both players are now down to eight minutes on the clock that's after they've reached time control so knight to c6 check maxime grabs the exchange rook captures on c6 rook captures and now c3 the problem for maxime is now that a rapport um, uh, well the only uh, uh, counterplay a rapport has is pushing the c pawn but then that's the only counterplay he needs it's it's impossible to stop the pawn we have f6 by maxime now comes c2 rook to f1 and c1 with queen Rook captures on c1, we have knight captures on c1, and now uh, e5. So now Maxime is down a full piece, but his pawns are, uh, well, very, very dangerous. And here we have knight to e2 with check. Uh, there are two ways to go about this position with black. Uh, of course, if you allow the, the pawns to reach the seventh rank, then you've just lost the game. Uh, the other one, as it's a, uh, well, it, it's just super fun, is Rook to F8. And this is the, actually the engine's favorite choice, but this is just something that I'm showing you uh, in order um, to, to demonstrate how, uh, well, engines are just engines and humans are just humans, because this is what the engine says that you should play. Uh, E6. Rook captures on f6, e7 now, threatening to get a queen, knight to e2 with check, king g2, and now rook captures on c6. And after e8 queen, now uh, knight to d4, defends everything, and of course the engine knows that this is a draw. However, we are humans, we are most definitely not allowing our opponent to, to uh, grab a queen into the game, so instead a rapper just goes for knight to e2 check, king f2, and now knight to d4, threatens the rook, so everything has to be with tempo otherwise the white pawns just start marching forward rook to d6 now comes knight to b5 if you defend the knight with the king then you are also blocking your pass pawn so it's better just to move the knight and attack the rook rook to d7 and now again rapport's only plan is to push the other c pawn but it works perfectly fine so c4 uh, we have e6 by Maxime, c3, we have the, uh, e7, now comes c2 and f7. So the pawns are both on the 7th rank, and usually this means that you've just won the game. However, here uh, it's a little bit different. c1 queen, and now uh, we have e8 queen. The problem is if you play f8 queen, it seems like you are threatening to bring the other queen into the game with check. Uh, the problem is there's queen c5 check, and this now covers the f8 square, and uh, it's game over. Once the king moves, you give up the rook here for the queen. Uh, white brings another queen into the game, you capture on f8, and of course, completely winning. So instead, after uh, c1 queen, we have e8 queen. It's a little bit different, but uh, it also works out very nicely for black. Here we have queen to c5 with check, and now... Uh, whatever white plays uh, is, is not enough for, for white to win because there's simply too much coverage of the f8 square. Uh, the problem is if you play queen e3, you offer a queen trade, then we play queen to f5 check first. And now white has to block with the queen because uh, the rook hangs. And after queen f4, you simply trade, captures, captures, and play uh, king to c5. You have f8 square, uh, f8 square covered, knight is coming here. Uh, you're gonna put the rook on f. Sorry, knight is coming here. You're gonna put the rook on f8. You're gonna win the f7 pawn. That's game. So instead, after queen c5 check, uh, Maxime tries king to g2, but now comes a uh, queen to c6 with check. Not a, not an easy move to find, but uh, Rapport spots the perpetual king to h3, and now queen to h6 with check. We have king to g2. 
and it was in this position on move 66 uh, that Maxim Vashiolagrov and Richard Rapport agreed to a draw as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, you're just going to have to repeat and then black goes back or if you persist, for example, after king g2, let's say queen to c6 check, king h3, you go queen h6 check. If white persists with king to g4 trying something, then even queen g6 check and now you have coverage of the e8 square. That's a game now. King h3, we're going to play queen to h5 check, king g2 and rook captures on e8. So perfectly fine for black captures, captures. Uh, and now, of course, uh, black is completely winning. So an incredible game where uh, Rapport chose this very, very tricky line with um, uh, very early on, uh, as early as move, um, uh, as move 9 with this... Uh, sorry, as, as early as move six with this h3, h5 idea. So he was not playing for a draw. He wanted a sharp game. He wanted a game where, you know, he plays where he is the strongest and that is uh, super complicated positions. Uh, he got a complicated position, then it all calmed down, but he then uh, persisted and continued, uh, to, you know, just to complicate with that queenside castle and going for that d5 square. Uh, and in the end, Maxim got a winning position. He founded the brilliancy with c5, uh, as I imagine uh, most of you you have in this uh, here position so c5 very important in opening up the d file for the for the white rooks uh, but in the end uh, where it mattered most where he had to capture here on h6 uh, uh, he simply did not do it he played rook captures on g7 and that was uh, enough for rapper to, to, to claim a draw sometimes the move that you know anyone would play you put this position on the board in the middle of the street and you know whoever passes by they're gonna play oh there's a there's a rook hanging so uh, sometimes it's that simple, but, uh, uh, you know, Maxim, of course, uh, did not capture it for, for good reasons. Uh, it was too, too much to, to calculate, and uh, they were all uh, incredibly tired. The game lasted for, like, five hours, and this was already uh, four and a half hours of play, so... Of course, no one can blame anyone, uh, but uh, this would mean that uh, Maxime is out of the semifinals and that Rapport uh, reaches the finals of the FIDE Grand Prix in Belgrade, where he is waiting for the winner of the match, Anish Giri and... Um, uh, Anish Giri and, uh, uh, and uh, 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 Andrekin. And uh, we're going to see that one after, as they've drawn both of their classical games, they have to play it now rapid tie breaks to see who will face a rapport in the finals. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it and that you've learned, uh, you know, something a little bit. Just because you need a draw doesn't mean you have to play a, a boring Berlin. You have to play something where you are strongest and then you will either win or, or draw the game. Uh, or, you know, sometimes lose, but uh, you, you have to play that which suits you best and not just try something because, uh, you know, uh, it, it's uh, generally accepted that you should do that. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it and that a little bit of trivia in the beginning about uh, Tartakover having uh, green eyes. So, hope that was uh, to your liking as well. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Lucas Teokaris, Jonathan Lay, Dave Austin, uh, Morono Saksatilis, uh, better surf caster than Bob the Garbage Man, and uh, Filip Rambialkovsky for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon continuing the coverage uh, of the Grand Prix uh, until it finishes. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.